Hi, this is Brian from Provision Studios. I'm here today for part two of our introduction to Pro Tools. Um, part one, we looked at creating a new session, uh, opening a track, naming that track before we recorded so that our regions would uh, you know, coincide uh, name-wise with the track that they were uh, associated with. We looked at our setup window uh, specifically for our buffer size, uh, how to adjust that to deal with recording latency. So let's uh, pick up from where we left off there. This is that same session. Um, you can see we've got the bass and the guitar track. We've got two regions that we recorded. There was no, nothing recorded on them, just uh, bl you know, blank noise, you know, empty noise. Um, and those regions, you can see when you click on that region there, the bass region, it highlights this in the in the bass track. When you click on the guitar, it then highlights your guitar track. You know, so and I, again, if we had let's say ten regions here, and you clicked on each one, if they were named properly, you know, they're going to you know reflect keyboards, vocals, guitar lead, or whatever. You know, and that's the easiest way to work because it keeps everything uniform, everything's labeled, there's no guessing, you work more efficiently. Okay. I'm going to go to back to the um, setup window, and instead, uh, we looked at hardware and playback engine last time. I'm going to go to I.O. Now, depending on what your interface is, this will look different for probably each one of us. But with mine, I have, like I said, two ends. Okay, I've got uh, it, mono input one, mono input two. Now what you can do here is if, if you have a consistent routing for your inputs, to make things a little easier for you, you can name them here. Let's say for input one, you again all you simply you're doing is just double clicking on uh, the uh, the button there um, let's say on input one I always have my base in there I run my base in there for input two I always run guitar or keys okay I'm going to OK that, and I'm going to go now to um, back to our session. You can see in my I.O. that says guitar keys and bass. OK, the way I recorded it, I had my bass in my in input 2, my guitar in my input 1. So basically, what well, the reason I'm doing this is to show you that if you've got a certain way that you, you want to use it every time, you'll see right here, Let's say, all right, I want to have my bass go over there. It's already labeled for you. It'd be so easier instead of having input one and input two. Let's say you've got an eight input interface or a 16 channel interface. And, you know, you can get confused real quick. Oh, what is that? Is that seven? Which, which one's seven? You'll know right away, okay, well, seven's my overhead. You know, I got an overhead on there. And it, it, would, it would say that. It would say interface. If you had eight tracks or eight channels here you you would go you could go right to you know overhead click on it and then your overhead would be routed for that anyway that you know that's just a really cool way to keep things again um, labeled properly you work more efficiently secondly you can you, this is says mix bus you can call it your main output uh, You can call it anything you really want. That will be reflected here in your output. You get your main out, stereo out. Okay. Again, I will, re I will return to the I.O. section one more time. Now I'm going to look at buses. Buses is cool because you can name these anything you want. See, i got a stereo effect send on channels 3 and 4. i got a stereo print. Buses one and two go to print one and print two, and that's if I'm running effects. I'll go into this in another video, and we'll actually 
label these for what effects we're going to send to them. But for right now, just know that you can name these whatever you want, you know. And uh, it really helps you when you are trying to uh, be uh, uh, organized to have everything labeled properly. Okay. All right. That's that. Um, next thing that you would want to do uh, when you are getting ready to record is you want to make sure uh, if you're using a click track, you want to have you, you want to know how to get to it. Okay, what you do is it's real simple. You click on track, create click track, and there you go. There's your click track. Real simple. You can click right here. Uh, each track has a little drop down here. It's a down arrow. You click on it, and you can see track height. You can increase your track height to whatever you want it to be. You can see right here you got click. You can click on it. Here you go. You can change the level of, you know, each each click the accented one if you want it to be just a little bit louder you know you can have that if you want it to be where they're even or even uh, a different sound like this can all be changed here also if you want to click you know overall this to be louder in the mix right here they can all be done right here or if you want it lower it all you did that it reacts like a regular track now shortcut for let's say you've made an adjustment to a fader and you want to take it back to zero instead of taking it and going and trying to get it oh I can't get it on zero exactly okay and you're here you just say you're wherever you're at click and hold the alt or option key and then click on the fader and it returns automatically to zero there you go Clicking and dragging on a track name in the tracks bin allows you to move tracks around. You can see here you can move stuff around to where you want it to be. Okay, very good. All right, so now we've got our click track. We've got a guitar and a bass track. What what else would be good to have here? A master fader would be real good to control the overall output to let's say our studio monitors or our headphones okay that is accomplished by clicking on track going to new we want a stereo master fader create and again we can move it wherever we want I'm gonna move that fader all the way to the end now this will control our overall output of all our tracks because again they are all routed to our main output even our click track. Everything's going to the main output here. So, if it's, again, this controls your overall output to your whatever is going on your main app. Also, any inserts you put here will be put on every track that's routed to your main output or any uh, bus that is routed to your main output. So, let's say you want to put an EQ on everything at the end let's say you wanna maybe put a little high pass and a low pass filter on everything you want a 20 hertz and a 2000 kilohertz you know roll off on both your low and high end as it goes out and maybe a little compression To thicken up your mix a little bit. This will affect every track that goes out main output. Everything will be controlled by this fader and will be processed with these inserts. Again, if you don't want anything there, you just want to use it to gauge how everything is coming through level wise let's say you've got your bass turned up here and your guitar turned up here and obviously with with 
uh, plus 6.8 decibel and plus 4.2 4, 4 decibel over here, you're probably going to be close to clipping. So you you would if these two tracks have to be that loud, you're going to want to roll that back. Anyway, it's all you know relative to how you're mixing or, or what you're doing. I'm just trying to show you the way to set set up a session here. Okay, um, that's that's about it for this part. Um, I'm going to go into a part three, uh, which is going to show. Uh, I, I shouldn't call it advanced uh, processing of effects, but I'm going to go into a uh, taking our time-based effects processing and uh, show you how to route them parallel to a track through an auxiliary bus. We're going to do that in our next video, and I hope that you guys uh, will um, enjoy this video, will enjoy that video, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them at the, at the bottom of, the, of this video. Thank you very much, and you have a great day.